Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in today's video, we're talking about the secret mission of the Tesla robot. And no, I'm not talking about acting as the first intimate partner for the very lonely folks who are currently shorting Tesla stock and still live in their mum's basement. In fact, this doesn't have a whole lot to do with Tesla, period. Now, my prediction is that a lot of people watching are gonna think I'm completely high and out of my absolute mind. Both of those things may actually be true. But I also predict that this video will age exceptionally well over the coming decades. There's two key parts to this mission, both with extremely profound implications, especially if you're either a Tesla stock investor or a human being. So with that said, let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto use the link in the description and if you'd like up to two free stocks check out the link in the description to Weeble. if you open a new account you'll get one free stock valued up to three hundred dollars just for opening an account and if you make an initial deposit of five dollars or more you'll get a second free stock valued up to two thousand dollars seriously Free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. Okay, so let's talk about the first secret mission of the Tesla robot. In short, to dramatically expand the global economy. Now, I can tell I've probably already lost a few of you guys and girls, but let me guess as to why that may be. The difference in our opinions is probably grounded in the difference in our beliefs about the future and our understanding of what's happening with the exponential progress of technology. Now, I'm not here to give you guys and girls a lesson in Moore's Law, in artificial intelligence, in deep learning, in neural networks, nor am I here to convince you that we're heading toward a future of absolute, complete and utter abundance, nor am I here to convince you that it's only a matter of time until human beings develop artificial general intelligence and soon after that, artificial general super intelligence. My goal today isn't to convince you folks that these things are inevitable, but to explain that I personally believe with 100% conviction that they are. Now, in a recent video, I made a prediction that sort of implied that Tesla could grow to have a market capitalization of, wait for it, around 750 trillion, yeah, trillion with a T dollars, somewhere between 2042 and 2069. By the way, those are actual estimates. I don't know the exact timing, nor do I know whether or not this will play out, but it was something that I believe is theoretically possible. As you'd expect, most people seem to laugh me off the internet and I totally understand this, but every single person who presented a counter argument, and yes, I'm using the term extremely loosely because most of these so-called counter arguments were just a self immolation, were from people who were reasoning by analogy, not from first principles. Each of these counter arguments had the same line of reasoning by analogy. Bro, the S&P isn't even worth that much. Even if the S&P grows at this rate, there's no way. Tesla will be worth more than the S&P. Or alternatively, you're an idiot. The global economy isn't even worth that much. How high you get off the internet. Now, uh, I'm just going to say it. When I see these type of arguments, I immediately realize that the person I'm talking to has zero idea what they're talking about. And I will immediately dismiss this kind of argument because there's no thinking involved. This is reasoning by analogy, which, as I said, it's self-immolation. It's embarrassing. It's not even worth taking the time. If instead somebody presented a counter argument and said, well, okay, that's all good and well, but I personally don't believe that Tesla would be able to produce this many robots by this point in time because of XYZ reason, that's fine. Or alternatively, you might say, well, I personally don't think that Tesla will be able to develop artificial general intelligence or artificial general super intelligence by this point in time because of XYZ. That is an argument I'd be willing to take on board. That is valid reasoning. But reasoning by analogy and saying, well, the economy is not that big today or the S&P is not big today and even if it grows this much, blah, 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 it's not gonna get that big in the been not even worth taking the time. Now, even if you think I'm completely out of my mind, have a listen to what Elon Musk had to say after unveiling Tesla's plans to develop a humanoid robot. This I think will be quite quite profound because if you say it like, what is the economy? It is at the foundation, it is labor. So what happens when there is, uh, you know, no shortage of, of labor? This is why I think long term that there will need to be universal basic income. Um, yeah. But, but not right now, because this robot doesn't work. Uh, so <laughs> we just didn't need a minute. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's, it's essentially in the future, uh, physical work will be a choice. If you, if you want to do it, you can, but you won't need to do it. 
obviously has profound implications for the economy because uh, given that the economy at, at its foundational level uh, is labor, I mean, capital is, uh, capital equipment is just distilled labor. Is there any actual limit to the economy? Uh, maybe not. Words matter. Is there any actual limit to the economy? Maybe not. So this will be a wonderful time in the comments below. If anybody has a good valid argument as to why there is a limit to the economy, please tell me in the comments below what is the limit in terms of trillion dollars of GDP per year of the global economy and how have you drawn that conclusion? I'll wait. Anyone? Global economy? Limit? What is it? How to draw that conclusion? Comments below? Anyone? So here we are looking at world GDP over the last 2,000 years. Maybe you guys and girls playing along at home could let me know if you notice a trend, as in growth of the economy is literally heading vertical like you've never before seen. This is insane growth. So to those of you who believe that there is a limitation to the size the global economy can reach, just, just let me know, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and we're just gonna have a little bit of fun here. Just tell me when we reach that limit, okay? I'm just gonna continue this trend line along and you just tell me exactly when we've reached the limit. Are we here? Is it here? It just goes like that? Or do we go a little bit further first? Maybe over here? Or, you know, does it suddenly start veering off to the side for some unknown reason? Like, and then go, like, what happens? I don't know. Please, in the comments below, just explain exactly where the limit is and why you've drawn that conclusion, and maybe we can have a conversation. Sorry, guys, I, uh, I seem to have dropped my mic. So let me just wrap this one up, okay? I believe with absolute conviction that the global economy, with or without Tesla, is gonna to continue to grow at an ever-increasing exponential rate with no end in sight. And I also believe that, assuming Tesla continues to develop and actually does release their humanoid robot, that Tesla's humanoid robot will play a meaningful hand in the expansion of the global economy. Today, there's around three and a half billion productive participants in the global economy people, humans. In the future, in theory, just bear with me here, I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but project 10, 20, 30, 40 plus years into the future, maybe even beyond that. In theory, if a company like Tesla can produce humanoid robots that are also at least as smart as people, again, that won't happen tomorrow, but we're talking long term here. The trend is obvious with AI, it is gonna reach superhuman level capabilities in the future, just a matter of when. Assuming that is the case, if a company could make, let's say, a hundred million or a billion, or wait for it, I know it's crazy, but bear with me, 10 billion of these humanoid robots, what impact might that have on the size of the global economy if, keeping in mind these are humanoid robots but much smarter than humans, therefore they're able to add even more economic value than a single person. One robot may be worth 10, 20, 100 human beings in terms of its contribution to the global economy. What do you think might happen to the size of the global economy? Something to think about, huh? And of course, if Tesla has a hand in expanding the scale of the global economy and has a meaningful contribution there, obviously that's gonna have a fairly positive, and I, this is a massive understatement, a fairly positive impact on Tesla stock and Tesla's market cap as a company. Now, maybe it's just my optimism bias, maybe it's the dozens, if not hundreds of books I've read on artificial intelligence, the future, the abundance that we're headed towards, or maybe it's the hundreds of doses of high potency psychedelics I've taken in my past that are clouding my ability to see the future clearly, but I believe this is inevitably where where we're headed. So to sum up this part one, the first secret mission of the Tesla robot, which to me seems blindingly obvious, is to dramatically expand the global economy. Another way to frame this is that the goal of the Tesla bot is to become an extremely valuable contributor to the global economy in terms of its ability to provide useful labor. And now the second secret mission of the Tesla robot, which I think many more of you will be on board with, Spoiler alert, um, it's to help colonize Mars, duh. So we heard earlier that some of the initial applications for the Tesla robots would be to replace dangerous, boring, and repetitive jobs. Let's listen to Elon Musk speaking with Peter Diamandis, whose books, by the way, would be a valuable insight for those of you who think we aren't heading towards a future of complete and utter abundance. Let's listen. Yeah, going to Mars reads like that ad book for, for Shackleton going to the Antarctic. You know, it's, it's dangerous, uh, it's uncomfortable, um, it's a long journey, you might not you know, come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure and uh, it'll be amazing, an amazing experience. And your name will go in history. Yes, <laughs> you might not. It's going to be uncomfortable. And then you probably won't have good food and all these things, you know? <laughs> so so yeah. if, 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 if an arduous and dangerous journey where you may not come back alive, um, but it's a glorious adventure, sounds appealing, and Mars is the place. 
and you still the, have thousands of volunteers, if not millions of volunteers, who would yeah, want to go. I, I mean, honestly, a bunch of people probably will die in the beginning. It's, yeah. it's tough sledding over there. Dangerous, boring, arduous, a bunch of people probably will die initially. I mean, what better opportunity for Tesla robots? In case you don't know, Elon Musk is rightfully pursuing the goal of setting up a human colony on Mars with urgency because you know what? There's so many things that could wipe out all life on Earth especially all human life on Earth, and we can't do a thing about it. So what better way to back up humanity than get us onto another celestial body? Now, there are a few people that don't seem to understand the urgency in getting a human colony on Mars, and if that's you, maybe look into the fossil record, super volcanoes, gamma ray bursts, although even if on Mars, we're probably in that event, which is why Mars is the first stepping stone, but not the final destination. Maybe look at how often large extinction level impacts occur on planet Earth. Maybe if you're a little bit unsure, grab a telescope and look at the surface of the moon. That might give you a little bit of a hint. I could keep rattling off a number of existential threats to humans or all life on Earth, but hopefully you folks get the point. Unless you're a complete and utter nihilist, it's probably a worthwhile goal to urgently pursue backing up humanity, getting us onto another planet in the solar system, and then eventually beyond that as well. Otherwise, there's a reasonable chance that at some point in the future, one of the existential threats that we're either aware of, or worse, unaware of, may wipe out all humans and then it's done and dusted. Given the fact that SpaceX are urgently working towards the goal of getting Starship up and ready and then beginning cargo and then human missions to Mars, it's worth considering the impact of Tesla robots. Now, I personally believe that Mars colonization is actually gonna be a forcing factor to push Tesla to develop their humanoid robot faster than they otherwise would. Let me give you guys a few reasons. First of all, approximately every two, 2.2 years, there's a Mars launch window. In other words, there's only a small window of time where we can actually launch payloads to Mars. If we miss one window, we're gonna wait another two plus years and we don't have that kind of time. Let's just say that in a couple of years time, SpaceX has developed Starship, done some testing, done some orbital launches, re-landed. Okay, everything seems okay, but we haven't done enough flights to be sure. Probably not safe enough to put humans on these. Oh yeah, and by the way, we haven't bothered developing the life support system yet. What's more likely? SpaceX go, you know what? F it. Let's send a thousand robots to Mars on the very first attempt of trying to land on the surface. And hey, look, if we crash and we destroy a thousand robots, at least they weren't human lives. And if by some miracle we successfully land on the surface, well damn, now we've got a thousand robots that can start doing something useful. The alternative, of course, would be to send an empty starship, or maybe a starship with some supplies, non-perishable food, etc., and some materials. But honestly, if Tesla has the ability to send some humanoid robots that can improve with over-the-air software updates, potentially even sent from Earth, why the hell wouldn't you at least try this? Remember, they can do this without a life support system. And remember, these robots don't need spacesuits and they weigh about as much as a petite woman, 125 pounds. So you can send a lot more robots than you could equivalent human beings. And then of course the robots don't need food, so you don't need to bring the food, nor the water, blah, 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 blah. It makes a hell of a lot of sense. They're gonna be super efficient. And yes, at some point, some humans need to go as well. But I personally believe that these robots are gonna play a very meaningful role doing the hard, boring, dangerous, and repetitive tasks of helping to set up a Mars colony. And that includes being the very first passengers on the very first starships actually sent to the surface of Mars. Now, if you guys and girls will recall, the Tesla robot is actually quite petite, doesn't weigh a whole lot, which is great because you can send more of them on a starship, payload, weight, total mass to orbit really matters. And of course, some of you might be thinking, well, hang on, if it's piss weak, by the way, that might be an Australian expression for not super strong, how's it gonna be useful on Mars? Well, here's the thing. Mars has about 38% the gravity of Earth. So effectively, this means that it's gonna be able to lift three times as much on Mars as it would on Earth, etc., etc. Now, there is something else that I wanna talk about as well. If you happen to be just listening to the audio of this video, it might be a good time to pay attention to the video as well. Let me know what you guys and girls think in the comments below. Do you notice some similarities between the SpaceX spacesuits and the Tesla Optimus bot design, or is it just me? So let me tie it all together. Tesla initially wants to develop the Tesla bot to dramatically expand the global economy. And as a side effect of that, they're gonna be printing literally trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. And why does this matter? Well, you see Elon Musk owns about one fifth of the company, about 20% of Tesla. Guess what Elon can do in the future? Hey guys, uh, let's pay some dividends, huh? Yeah, good. Next minute, starts paying dividends. Next minute, Elon Musk out of his own pocket with his own money from Tesla dividends can start buying up insane numbers of Tesla robots, sending them to Mars and almost single-handedly fund the development of a Martian colony. Now, I understand how crazy this may sound to some of you folks, but think in the long term and let's be logical about this for a moment. Mars is gonna be really fucking expensive. Now, 
Who of all the people on planet Earth could afford to potentially contribute in a meaningful way to helping to establish a Martian colony? Basically nobody today, but maybe in the future, if somebody like Elon Musk or Jeff Pezos can 10x or more their wealth, maybe they can have a little bit of an impact. Of course, Jeff Pezos at this time is busy investing in lawyers for Sue Origin to slow down SpaceX, so I'm not sure he's going to have the available capital. So that pretty much just leaves Elon Musk, and it's pretty obvious that countries aren't going to collaborate and put too much in towards a Mars colony, so it is going to need to come from very wealthy philanthropic individuals rather than countries, governments or organizations. Lucky for us, the guy whose life mission it is to help make life multiplanetary just so happens to be somebody who's also established the economic resources and the business models to be able to almost single-handedly fund this goal. So long story short, in order for Elon Musk to achieve his life's purpose, his sole goal in life, to help establish a human colony on Mars, he's going to need to amass orders of magnitude more wealth than he currently has today. And funnily enough, he happens to have a company or two that may actually be able to do that, providing, of course, he can do things that have never been done before and maybe have a substantial hand in literally expanding the entire global economy just to achieve this goal. And of course, there will be some people that doubt the viability of this, and that's totally fine, but um, just wanted to mention something. You may not be aware of this, but between you and I, Elon's brain is a little bit bigger than yours, and... He may be able to see and do things that you can't see or do, so it is worth considering that when you're making your assessment of whether or not this is a realistic possibility over the coming decades. So the ultra short version, make trillions of dollars with Tesla bots on Earth by dramatically expanding the global economy, and then use some of those many trillions of dollars to send some of those Tesla bots to Mars to establish a human colony and repeat the cycle. Pretty simple, huh? And I have to say, sincerely, I am so excited for the future. As a lifelong space nerd, somebody who's been dreaming about getting to other planets, visiting the stars since I was a child, I'm so excited to see that we're finally taking those first steps. When I watched the very first SpaceX booster come back and land on Earth in 2015, I definitely got something in my eye. The same thing has happened when I've been watching the progress with Starship with those initial test flights and the belly flop landings as well. And I'm sure the same thing is going to continue as we get closer and closer to this goal of the very first mission to Mars and then ultimately building out that colony. I'm so grateful and excited that Earth's MVP, Elon Musk, has both the balls, the brains and soon the resources to actually make this happen. Mars awaits. Ooh, damn, that'd be some good merch. Next minute, Mars awaits merch is now available in the merch store. There's a link in the description. Shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, phone cases, and more. And I'd love to know what you guys and girls thought of this video in the comments below. Do you agree that there's two secret missions of the Tesla robot? One, to dramatically expand the global economy, and then two, to use those resources to help fund the Mars colony? And for some bonus points, let me know, when do you think the first Tesla robot will set foot on Mars? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching you're awesome if you'd like early access exclusive videos regular q a's our private discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again